The rest of us two follow-up stories are not better than the original leak. Again, this video is not going to be with spoilers just like the previous one, so don't worry about it. But before we begin, drop a like on this video, share it around, comment on it. Your interactions with this channel helps promote it in the algorithm and outside of it when you share the videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of the newest videos. I just woke up, I might sound a bit tired, but I couldn't skip over this story that jumped up on my Twitter feed. Let's read it and then we'll talk about it. Report. Video game makes women androgynous to quote, not offend trans women. The Last of Us 2 has been alleged to de uh, deliberately make their female characters androgynous to quote, not offend, okay, I'm just rereading the headline like a idiot. Uh, the allegations come in the same week as Naughty Dog suffered leaked, uh, f a leak from, wow, the, the writing is terrible. As Naughty Dog suffered a leak from a disgruntled developer who dumped the game's plotline. The rogue employees reported to have disagreed with the political direction of the game, as The Last of Us 2 is allegedly said to portray a homophobic Christian couple as villains, keeping in line with the hard left pro LGBT narrative. In relation to the gameplay footage leak, footage leak speaking with Sausage Roll, the rogue developer said, I don't doubt even for a moment that this leak came from the studio. The Last of Us Part 2 is very divisive, and as you can imagine, some of the team aren't really thrilled to be working on the game. The source goes on to talk about how stale the work environment has been at Naughty Dog, and how so many people have had to bite their tongues because cancel culture is very much alive inside of the studio. Many people would agree with me that this has been uh, one of the worst projects they've ever had to work on and that's not just because some people disagree with the plot even though some, some of the team members are Christians and don't necessarily agree with the game's message they are also professionals who can put their personal politics aside to get the job done. What really sucks about all of this is the working environment. Now I imagine a ton of people who started working as game developers did it because they love their job um, obviously coding uh, for any different company would make a ton of money and I think that most people who go into the video game industry would do it because of passion and I think one of the reasons that you can do, you can go uh, long term in a job is the fact that you enjoy it and that is it is satisfying but it's really hard to uh, make a project that you don't believe in uh, just like The Last of Us 2 for many of developers because um, we, we saw that 70% of the original team has already uh, left uh, because of the game allegedly. Um, they have 70%, what do they call it? I keep forgetting, overturn rate or something like that where everybody where 70% of the employees come in and come out. They need to go to... Uh, video like regular movies animators because most game animators won't work with the studio because it's so infamous it's really really bad let's read on and you'll understand the, the we'll talk about the headline and i'm gonna go for the social justice angle rather than the anti-social justice angle you'll see soon uh tony baker the voice actor for one of the main characters joel told fandom, I uh, quote, I don't, not, I don't doubt even for a moment that this leak came from the studio. The Last of Us Part 2 is very divisive, and as you can, can imagine, some of the team aren't really thrilled to be working on the game. Following the revelation, other developers were reportedly upset by the divisiveness within the team and the clear political bend to the game's sequel. According to another AAA developer, the push to give characters a more androgynous look has become a recent addition to many games. This is what I wanted to talk about. Uh, the characters in The Last of Us Part 2 are designed in such a way to not make trans people feel uncomfortable. Every single new character introduced in, in the sequel does not have definitive feminine or masculine qualities. Ellie and Dina specifically have been remodeled to look less feminine it even seems as if they uh, had Ellie as completely changed uh, since they first revealed her in The Last of Us Part 2. Now this is the trend 
that you can see in all the games. If you go to uh, the last, uh, not the last of us, um, what's its face? I forgot the name. We'll go to the headline and we'll see it. Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Yeah, Mass Effect is a very known franchise. I personally never played it, but when I heard about this old news uh, that they made the characters uh, ugly, uh, just so feminists would agree with this game, just to make them quote unquote look more like average women, uh, that was that was really funny to hear about. So, uh, as you can see, this is the original model of the on the left. This is the character they came up with. They took a beautiful woman. Obviously, this is on Instagram with lighting, photo editing, but still. Look at how attractive both the male character, the male character didn't suffer as much as you can see, it's still as attractive, even with a fuller beard. But the female character, look, look how attractive the real life model is, how good looking she is, how uh, symmetrically and objectively beautiful, uh, according to what they would call the, the beautiful standard she is. Uh, and look and how f at how frumpy the uh, character in game looks like. Feather lips, feather face, feather nose, uh, uncomplimented features, they uglified her on purpose. Okay, so this is not a new trend to gaming. Now what I actually want to say now is more of a social justice band rather than the entire SJW, like I said. Um, the fact that they don't make the character feminine uh, in order to not offend the trans crowd, I think offends it even more because the reason the trans crowd argues for uh, prepubescent uh, hormone control, hormone blockers, is because they don't want to go through puberty as male and they don't want to have all those male features because those same male features and uh, the fact that their body doesn't look uh, feminine makes their dysphoria even worse. At, the, at least that's what the latest uh, trans literature as well as uh, this is the position that, that the current trans lobby uh, is behind. So one of the reasons uh, the trans lobby would argue for prepubescent hormone blockers is because they don't want to go through puberty as a male and they want to have more feminine features so that the, their dysphoria won't be as bad as it is if they would have gone through puberty like their uh, uh, quote-unquote gender assigned at birth so this is why it not only is it uh is it not only is it virtue signaling but it's virtue signaling that doesn't benefit anyone the trans crowd would love to play if they are uh, a trans woman they would love to pay to play a more feminine trans woman uh, and one of the arguments from the other side the non-trans side is that most trans, trans people do play into their gender role, the, the gender they uh, transition over to, uh, uh, because it's part of their dysphoria. So they, if, if you're a trans woman, you would go for the high heels, you would go for the big, uh, big breasts, the feminine, feminine features and everything. So that's why it's such a weird thing to do. But it's not you that they are um, not only making more character uglier to fit the feminist agenda of uh, quote unquote average women, but they are now making them more androgynous, which as a, an avid gamer, I can definitely see the trend and attest to it. Let's read on with the news. This is only true for, uh, let's read the, the part between it and we'll read the other quote. The shift to make female characters appears most almost uh, masculinized as being dubbed, uh, quote, a new worm. No, sorry. Uh, speaking with Sausage Roll, the uh, anonymous developer said, this is only true for trans people. A trans woman can, can't can naturally grow large breasts and not all trans people can afford implants. If you see a game where the women are a little less curvy, it's not because the game designers are worried about receiving backlash for sexualizing women, it's because they are worried about offending the trans community. Now, this is new to me. I thought they are doing it uh, to... Um, to make to make them quote unquote look more average, uh, but apparently what this developer says is it's to not offend the trans community. But I guess it would more offend the uh, non-binary crowd because they are n not either with the masculine side nor are they with the feminine side. Because most trans women not only would love to as have those feminine features, they go through uh, the 
the toughest of um, operations paying a lot of money just to get those features so that's why it's a weird argument and some of some of the people in the trans community are actually claiming it back and trying to kick out the non-binary crowd because they think they are just writing uh, their coattail and they are tr uh, trying to co-opt their movement. Uh, from a design standpoint, this is a really challenging problem. I've had many board meetings about how to tackle this. Trans people want, uh, quote, realistic representation in our games, uh, but they feel excluded if they are represented as too masculine or too feminine. That's why you will see a lot of designers, uh, quote, nerfing the female form, so to speak, so that the difference between trans women and cis women is a little less noticeable. So yeah, um, the last paragraphs really uh, accentuate it, and, and, and I think they're specifically talking about the non-binary crowd, that they don't want their character to be too masculine or too feminine, because like I said, again, most trans women would like the character to be, uh, would like themselves to even look more female and more feminine. At least most of them will. Uh, same goes for trans men. So yeah, by the amount I've already said trans in this video, you can get it. It's going to be demonetized. So by the way, if you want to support this channel, uh, you have channel memberships now, as well as uh, links down below to support it on Patreon and subscribe stuff. Let's finish the story. On the other side of the spectrum, a controversial game where you can play as Jesus. Okay, I'm not reading this. Um, I, I actually seen this game. Uh, it's kind of an attempt to cash in on the anti-SJW phenomenon. I'm not going to go into it because it's going to demonetize me for sure. And uh, it's not worth talking about it, at least right now. So yeah, this is nothing new. Again, as you can see, they've already uglified this beautiful beautiful woman in uh, Mass Effect Andromeda and you can see more and more games going towards the androgynous route uh, probably because of the non-binary crowd being such a loud voice even though they are such a small community. Um, I, I originally at least with the last effect Andromeda and, and if I recall correctly by the statements from Bioware they did make it because they want the characters to look quote more average uh, and it had nothing to do with making it androgynous not to offend the non-binary crowd. But as this developer says, the trend is actually because they don't want to offend the non-binary crowd, which I guess I can believe. I always thought the other way around, but appear it appears to be like that. Uh, I think that they are mischaracterizing as the trans community. And when people think trans, most of them think of trans women uh, because they're the the larger part of the community and trans men are more of the minority and the non-binary side for most people are not considered even trans. Um, so that's why it's so weird when, he make, when they make that argument. Like I said, most trans women would like to appear women, would like to have the most female features. Uh, uh, the, the other way around, because they look masculine and have some masculine features, it just uh, exacerbates their um, gender dysphoria. That's why some of them would argue that they would have want uh, to go through hormone therapy before their puberty so they could not get the male puberty and not have uh, male features. So yeah, I don't know guys, what do you think in the comments? Uh, like I said, uh, not only would the right-wing side or the more conservative side not agree with this, even the leftist side and the trans argument uh, won't agree with this, unless you're non-binary, again, which most people don't consider trans anyway. Uh, so yeah, what do you think in the comments? If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you, guys, uh, for you guys to drop a like on it, share it around, maybe if it gets demonetized, that way it's uh, promoted organically. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to it and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of the newest videos. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.